Hi friends, welcome to this knowledge series for Cancer Rounds. Many people ask us what will happen if I have acute myeloid leukemia. I have been diagnosed with acute leukemia and these are the frenetic calls which comes to us in the middle of the night. But dear friends, today in 2023 and 24, please do not be worried about acute myeloid leukemia. Today in next 5 minutes, we are going to talk about acute myeloid leukemia. All you want to know about acute myeloid leukemia so that you can conquer with us armed with knowledge and scientific evidence. Acute myeloid leukemia happens when there is uncontrolled proliferation of white blood cells which gets diagnosed by on a simple CBC when you go to a doctor with a complaints of weakness, fatigue, fever or abdominal lumps and bumps anywhere in the body and then the doctor orders a simple test called CBC and all these knowledge series we keep on harping on the same fact that CBC is the gateway for early diagnosis of blood cancers. So once you have high blood counts or even a low blood count, so hemoglobin is low or say hemoglobin is, is lower on the side from the normal WBC counts is between 4 to 11,000, they can be up more than 11,000 say at any cost 60,000, 70,000 or they are less or 2000 or 1000 but what is the characteristic point is that the neutrophils are less than the lymphocytes they are in a differential where you see the lymphocytes being more than neutrophils think about this disorder and of course the platelets are lower in 95 percent of people the platelets will be lower side if they are normal and if the wpc counts are high that's a cml but other than that it is aml the moment you are diagnosed with aml first thing happens is flow cytometry flow cytometry helps in diagnosis of AML within the next six to, four, six to eight hours by virtue of seeing the antennas or the signals on the red blood cells or white blood cells, what is called as cluster designations in terms of CD13 and 33 being positive. Once you know that flow cytometry is positive, you have to do a bone marrow test, bone marrow aspiration and biopsy. You collect the sample for cytogenetics and in India now what we call as next generation sequencing because we know the AML like blood cancer, other blood cancers, all other, other malignancies where you have stages. In AML you have got good risk, intermediate and high risk which is based on your own genetics. Dear friends, in AML the prognosis depends upon your own genetics. So you need to do a bone marrow test along with our cytogenetics which is called karyotyping in various countries or an NGS next generation sequencing where the report comes in. 21 days because it's a cluster of your gene makeup of an AML which tells you how you are going to behave, how you are going to respond to treatment and what kind of a treatment will be best for you. 50 to 60 percent of people of AML first time presents with pneumonia. So please do understand you have to get an HRCT test, test, test done to know whether there's any pneumonia inside your lung or not because AML itself can cause fever as well. So once you have diagnosed that in one day and that's what the TAT turnaround time in, in Fortis is and once you have diagnosed if you don't have a, and you are young fit it is for the young and fit and leukemia can happen any age younger age uh, adolescent age younger ages and elderly ages then different treatments are are available for various subgroups. So if you are in, in younger age group or young or infant age group or in a childhood age group, if you don't have a pneumonia, the algorithm is very simple. You get seven plus three chemotherapy, seven days of cytarabine and three days of donorubicin with 21 days of hospitalization with 16 days of recovery. 16 plus seven is 23. So 24 days, 22 to 24 days, you're inside the hospital. In this period, you will have fever, you will have you will require blood and platelet transfusions and you can develop a complication called neutropenic enterocolitis. You recover from this on day 28 after starting from the day one of cytarabine, you do a bone marrow test to look at whether you have achieved the remission. Remission means the blast count less than 5% and MRD less than 0.1% is a desirable goal before we proceed ahead and by this time in 28 days, you have got a genetic report and the NGS report to determine your risk stratification between good, intermediate and poor. If you are intermediate, intermediate and poor, you take another cycle of chemotherapy called high dose cytarabine and you start searching for a match. The moment you do flow cytometry, NGS, similarly in those period of time, you can get an HLA typing done from your brothers and sister because if you are a good risk, then you will require four chemotherapies, one induction, seven plus three, followed by three consolidations every month for three months. 
and followed by observation. But if you are intermediate and high risk dear, you will require one chemotherapy more after 7 plus 3 followed by bone marrow transplant because bone marrow transplants cures 60 to 70 percent of people in these subsets as well. So you require it to do an HLA typing which is not a blood group. HLA typing is a high resolution typing of your genomic stratification whether you are a match within brother or sister and nothing happens to the donor donor has to donate 300 of ml of blood so if you don't have a match sibling donor within your family because of of a smallest family size then you have to search in a registry called match unrelated donor registry that we will search it for you and if that is still not there then you do a half match transplant for these subset because in intermediate and high risk the risk benefit ratio skews towards doing a haplotransplant. So you need to do a haplotransplant which is all based upon your own genetic makeup. So dear friend, what is the starting point? Genetics and NGS needs to be done so as to be better informed what kind of a chemotherapy I want. And these chemotherapies, harsh chemotherapies can only be given to people who are fit and who don't have pneumonias. But what about 50% people who comes with pneumonia? So there is a drug called azacitidine, which is again given seven days subcutaneously, which is less harsher than seven plus three or flag venetoclax or flag ida, less in intensive, but is given with a drug called venetoclax. And that's a beauty that today we have got a oral drug called venetoclax, which is a BCL2 inhibitor, sheer brilliance and innovation of a science that oral pill can control AML. So you give for seven days and as I said, Tidine. with venetoclax you have to simultaneously overlap with azacitidine and venetoclax venetoclax for 14 days azacitidine for 7 days then do the bone marrow on day 28 to see whether you have achieved the remission or not or your lung pneumonia has resolved or not and by that time again the genetics will come back now even elderly people up to 80 years of age can safely take these medications like azacitidine and venetoclax so in any age group today you have a leukemia Dear friend, you can get treated. What is most important through this video, the message is please get your karyotyping and NGS done so that we can do a right risk stratification for early transplants because the early transplant brings better results in these subsets. And following transplants, you take three months of medication, three to four months medication more and then stop it. And after that, there's a 60% chance that you will be cured of your leukemia and that is a six months duration. So dear friends, acute myeloid leukemia is not that dreaded in 2023. We can cure it together. And if you have got any questions across the world, please feel free to contact Cancer Round, the most trusted second opinion partner for your, your hematological queries. Thank you.